The World Cup is over, ladies and gentlemen. Another tournament in the history book. And you know what that means? It's time for a team of the tournament video. <laughs> Sick. We're going to go through every single position, go through the guys who are sort of candidates, that are nominees, for example, for this extremely prestigious award. And at the end of the video, I'll go through my actual team of the tournament. We'll go through all the nominees and decide who gets each position. Now, if you go on to enjoy this one, feel free to slap a like on it. And of course, subscribe if you are new to the channel. Over 2,871% of you are currently not subscribed. So I'd really appreciate it if you hit that big red button. But we are going to get absolutely straight into into this one here and we're of course gonna start with the shot stoppers first of all for croatia we've got dominic livakovic a penalties hero a spot kick specialist as i mentioned he was the hero for croatia in penalty shootouts against japan although they kind of made it very easy for him and against brazil as well simply put without him they wouldn't have made it to the semi-finals they would have probably gone out in the round of 16 actually no japan's penalties were really bad they'd have gone out in the quarterfinals but not only that on top of that he was also unbelievable against brazil making 11 saves in one game emmy martinez is next up we couldn't go any further without mentioning him could we the highest expected shithousery of the tournament. This guy, again, penalty specialist, penalty hero, not only against the Netherlands in that fiery quarterfinal, but of course in the final against France, saving a penalty from Kingsley Coman. Probably not as impressive from open play as Livakovic, but that's probably because Livakovic had more to do in the high pressure situations and in the final of the entire tournament, he was Argentina's hero. Plus he held Kylian Mbappe as a baby and made a save in the 121st minute. So and the final goalkeeper nominee is Morocco's Bounou, who was a consistent performer all the way through this and of course was part of the back five or six of Morocco that had the best defensive record of anyone, I'm pretty sure, out of the group stages and into the round of 16 too. These lot were crazy at the back and the Sevilla goalkeeper was a big help there. On to right backs and we stay with Morocco. We stay dipping stuff in that beautifully tasting hummus because we've got Ashraf Hakimi, uh, someone who, as we all expected, would be one of the main men out of that Moroccan team. But he, yeah, he was solid, I can't lie. One of Morocco's true heroes was sensational in the group stages. A little bit less influential in the knockouts, but great against Spain. Honestly, he gets in here for the Penenka alone. We're sort of trading between teams that got to the semi-finals at this point, because next up, we've got Josip Juranovic, who was silently one of the most consistent performers in defense, probably in the entire World Cup. Solid tackles per game, clearances per game, was great against Brazil and Japan and against Belgium. So yeah, the Celtic fullback is definitely deserving of a shout here. And the final right back that we've got here on this list is Nahuel Molina of of Atletico Madrid, uh, a winner of the World Cup ultimately for Argentina. I thought he was a little bit suspect at times defensively, like letting Kylian Mbappe go so easily for his second goal in the final. But other than that, was you know contributed greatly going forward. Next up, centre back. We're going back to Morocco, ladies and gentlemen. Roman Saiz completed most of this tournament with 0.5 hamstrings at best, and for that reason, for just being a complete warrior, he is in here. And now, nah, no, that would be doing him a disservice because he was the heart and soul, the center of, as I said, one of the best and one of the most surprisingly good defenses of the entire tournament. Himself and, of course, Aguero, who signed for West Ham recently, doing an unbelievable job. All of those Moroccan defenders were brilliant throughout the group stages. So one you might be surprised about in terms of their inclusion is Harry Maguire next up. First of the England players, the first player that didn't actually make it to the semi-finals. Obviously, it's always going to be skewed to people who got further on in the tournament because they played more, impressed more, and ultimately did better. But I thought in every single game Harry Maguire actually played in, he did a really good job. I think he was only like culpable for like one goal. Harry Maguire always plays well for England. I've always said this. The fridge has got an upgrade, bro. He's one of them ones that like drops the ice out of the door now as well. Josko Gavardio, you knew he was going to get a mention. The Croatian, I want to say he's still 21 year old uh, centre back was, I mean, this guy was just different gravy. Croatia getting to the semi-finals is largely in part due to this guy. He is nuts. He looked incredible on the ball. Technically, he's brilliant. Whilst looking like Batman at the same time, no small crimes could have been committed in that Croatian camp. If even a single one of his teammates gets a parking ticket, he is out there immediately. I'm Batman. 
But no, seriously, defended unbelievably, grabbed a goal in the third place playoff as well. What a defender. He is the next best young centre-back in the world. And your final centre-back shout here is Christian Romero of Argentina. Probably the best centre-back for Argentina. I think, again, kind of someone who flew under the radar as being one of the players of the tournament. Whilst Otamendi was giving away penalties in the final, Christian Romero always looked pretty solid. I think he's a little bit error-prone at times, but during this tournament, I thought he was pretty solid. At left-back now, and I'm not gonna lie to you, lads, every left-back at this tournament was a little bit shit. First of all, we've got Francis Teo Hernandez, who's probably the obvious option because he was ever-present after his brother got injured. But I can't lie, yes, he got a goal and two assists. This guy was horrible defensively. Bukayo Saka ripped him in half. He was on the ropes at basically any solid winger that came up against him. But yeah, I guess he, he was good going forward, did get some important goal contributions as well. So ultimately, you kind of have to put him in there. The other finalist left back predominantly through the World Cup was Acuna, but then he got dropped for the semis in the final for Tagliafico. I don't think any of those guys can get in. Morocco and Croatia's left backs weren't particularly impressive. We found ourselves dropping to the Netherlands, who of course went out in the quarters and finding Dali Blind, who was great against the US, grabbed himself a goal and an assist, was pretty solid in every other game, but not crazily outstanding. Where there wasn't a huge amount of quality in left backs, we find an abundance at central midfield. And first of all, we have Antoine Griezmann of France. What a World Cup this guy had just in central midfield. Sensational stuff. He's found a new role for himself as the center of creativity in this side. Highest expected assists, highest chances created, grabbed himself three assists, just generally speaking as well. Yeah, the guy went crazy in terms of creating stuff. Definitely a worthy mention. We have two Argentinian midfielders next, starting with Alexis McAllister, the first man to ever win the World Cup for Brighton. This is, this is unheard of stuff, lads. Yeah, I mean, the guy with the most Scottish name ever has done the business for Argentina. Got an important assist in the final after a lovely passing move from Argentina for Angel Di Maria's goal. And then alongside him, we've got Enzo Fernandez, the young player of the tournament. The Benfica man, again, exceptional. Helping to run the show along with McAllister in the middle. His heat map is absolutely all over the place. We had a brace of Argentinian players. Now we've got a brace of Moroccans. Starting off with Angers midfielder Azadine Unahi. Probably the breakout star and most surprising star, I think, of the entire World Cup. Angers, who was struggling in League 1, I think they're bottom of the league. He may have found a 22-year-old gem here, and I expect him to get a pretty decent move. He's linked with Napoli already. He just seemed positive all the time, always driving forward, always taking his man on. And his slightly more defensive counterpart, Sofian Amrabat, is next up. What a tournament this guy had as well. Again, similarly hard worker. The tackle on Kylian Mbappe means that he gets in here on that alone. You've got to remember, Morocco played some amazing sides, and these two were standout players here. We continue with the centre mid vibe. We've got Jude Bellingham next up, the second of the English representatives. This guy, for 19, his dribbling capabilities, his passing capabilities, his defensive work ethic, his actual overall maturity and mentality for his age is stupid. The guy's superhuman. I've not seen a youngster perform that well like he did against Senegal in a while in an England shirt. For Croatia, we couldn't not mention Luka Modric, who bowed out of World Cup duties for his country in classy style, grabbing third place and a bronze medal, but it, he wasn't just sat on the sofa for this one. He's one of the most creative players at the tournament, instrumental in that Croatian success. The guy is aged like fine wine. I don't really like wine. He's aged like fine Jaeger. And the final central midfielder we'll go with here is Bruno Fernandes of Portugal. Another man who only made it to the quarterfinals, but we can't allow to have the team's performance or lack thereof to harm him because I think he has the highest average rating of games played of any player at the whole tournament. Three assists, two goals, 1.5 big chances created per 90. This guy was almost running things on his own for Portugal and didn't get the greatest amount of help unless they were playing against Switzerland. He got an 8 rating in every single game he played according to Sofa Score and win an 8.8 .8 against Uruguay. And now we move on to the wingers slash forwards. First of all, we go back to Croatia with Ivan Perisic, another silent assassin, a man with three assists in this tournament, as well as a goal as well, constantly up and down the wing for Croatia. Consistent performer against Japan, great against Morocco. He looked great going forward, and I cannot therefore wait for Antonio Conte to drop him even further back as a sitting right fullback holding defender.
Honda. My expectation uh, to suffer. We might sound a little bit England heavy here, and maybe that is my bias coming into play, given we didn't actually get past the quarterfinals. But I do think Bukayo Saka deserves a little bit of a shout here. He got three goals, but a quarterfinal stage was terrorizing Teo Hernandez until he was, for some reason, brought off by Gareth Southgate. Absolutely slapped it versus Iran. Scored off the bench against Senegal as well. Richarlison gets a bit of a mention here as well. Again, Brazil didn't make it as far as they would have hoped. And overall, they weren't good enough against Croatia to make it through. Some of the goals he scored and some of the contributions he put in through the group stages, I think, definitely deserve a mention. Similarly, Cody Gakpo as well, although he did carry it on into the round of 16 at least. He scored a perfect hat-trick of goals in the group stages. I kind of split amongst the three games. And was on fire during that period of the tournament. Here we have PSV to all the clubs that want him after the great performances he put in at this World Cup. One more thing. Price of the brick going up. But unfortunately, when it mattered, kind of went a little bit missing against Argentina. But he's still young, and overall, his performance was solid. Then we get down to the real nitty gritty Lionel Messi of Argentina. I mean, the player of the tournament, if we're going to be totally honest here. An all time World Cup performance at a tournament overall. And lads, I know. It sounds like I'm kissing his ass. I understand. I am one of those people that pr prefers Messi to Ronaldo in the GOAT debate. But honestly, I can understand people's arguments for both. But at this World Cup, Oh, fucking hell, lads. I mean, the guy went crazy. Seven goals and three assists. Seven goal contributions in the knockout stages. Ridiculous assists like the one against the Netherlands. On the grandest of stages at his age. And a brace in the final. I mean, come on, guys. And the man that went up against him and arguably was even better in the final. Kylian Mbappe. A man who scored a hat-trick in a World Cup final. Age 23. This guy's a joke. The Golden Boot winner with a tally of eight by the end of the competition. There were certain games where people were like, oh, he wasn't that great. I think he was actually dealt with pretty well against England, for example. But overall, that threat is just still there. He absolutely tore apart Poland. He scored a hat-trick against Argentina, the eventual winners. He was solid as well in the group stages. The guy's just inevitable. I will go through some honourable mentions, though, of players who probably didn't make it far enough in the tournament to really get considered. We've got Valt Weghorst for coming off the bench and doing a madness against Argentina. Ritsu Doan, who came in clutch for Japan, especially in the group stages. Mohamed Kudus, who pretty much carried the whole of Ghana on his back on his own. Ene Valencia grabbed three goals in the group stages for Ecuador, for God's sake. I thought Gavi was pretty impressive in Spain's midfield, even though the squad as a whole went out surprisingly early. Casemiro, similarly, you know, Brazil underperformed, but I thought he was solid, and he, of course, grabbed an important goal in the group stages. And Diogo Dalo, I know Portugal went far enough for Bruno Fernandes to get a mention. But I thought Diogo Dallo, as far as a right back was concerned, was pretty solid too. Now though, time to jump into the team and make our choices for this team of the tournament. And we start off in between the sticks. We start off in goal. Livakovic and Bunu, some of the options, but I'm gonna have to go with Emiliano Martinez, the king of shithousery himself. The guy in the final of the World Cup made the save of his career for a start at the end of extra time. And will probably go down in folklore as an all-time World Cup moment. Not only that, but is ridiculous ridiculous performance in the shootout against the Netherlands and then of course saving a penalty in the shootout and the mind games that he did to ensure that Chouameni missed as well in the final it has to be him it really has to be him at right back and we're gonna go with Morocco's Ashraf Hakimi Hakimi in that side like Morocco just shouldn't have made it to the semi-finals let's be real but he was just instrumental making so much happen down that right hand side with Hakim Ziyech who I didn't even mention to be fair he definitely deserved a honorable mention at least but never fear Croatian fans because at left back, I'm slapping Juranovic there. I'm taking a stand. You left backs need to fix up. I know it should be Teo Hernandez. I realise that. But I'm saying it with chess. No left backs were good enough at this tournament. Teo Hernandez might have got three goal contributions that were extremely important for his country, even getting to the final in the first place. Juranovic, very consistent. I know he can't play left back. I don't care. I'm going to get killed for that in the comments. I swear. The Croatian theme continues into the centre backs because we have to go with Josko Gavardio. Probably the centre-back of the tournament for me. I think Harry Maguire has a slightly better average rating, but Gavardio was playing better teams, if we're going to be honest with you, and went further in the competition. Grabbed himself that bronze medal as well. And alongside him, we're going to go with Argentina's Christian Romero. Now, unlike any team of the competition video I've done before, we're going to have four central midfielders here. So first of all, in the more defensive role, we're going to go with Morocco's Sofian Amrabat. And I don't think this is going to surprise anyone. The guy was genuinely so 
so solid against some of the best teams in the world in this Morocco side. Great, what a surprise he has ended up becoming. But yeah, I was so impressed with him and so impressed with his work ethic as well. Slightly further forward and in front of him, we're going to go first of all with Enzo Fernandez, the young player of the tournament. I think a safe bet here, realistically. Acknowledged as one of the best midfielders at the competition and one that performed well above and beyond his years. The Benfica man, another man that's going to be getting a very big move pretty soon. And alongside him is going to be his Argentina teammate, Alexis McAllister, who again was so classy, so confident on the ball, important goal contributions. But if you told me that was going to be three of the four midfielders before this tournament started, I would have slapped you in the face. I don't even care. And complete in the midfield, someone... To be honest, equally surprising when you look at his roles prior to this tournament is Antoine Griezmann. The Atletico man went absolutely nuts. The most creative, statistically, player at the entire tournament. Three assists, could have easily had more. Ran the show in a lot of games, the best player on the pitch against England. So now we find ourselves on the two forwards, the two strikers that are going to complete this team. And first of all, it's not going to be much of a surprise. The Golden Boot winner, Kylian Mbappe. The Frenchman grabbing eight goals. You can't leave him out. The actual player of the tournament is the final man that I'm putting into this 11 and it's Lionel Messi. The little Argentinian wizard has finally got the tournament that he'd been chasing for so long. He finally has all the international glory that he could ever ask for and one of the all-time great performances in a World Cup tournament as a whole to top it all off. We will go through a substitutes bench as well. I'm gonna slap like 10 people in here because World Cup subs benches have everyone and your nan on them. So first of all, backup goalkeeper Livakovic was really the other main option option for getting into the starting 11. We will put a left back on the bench in Teo Hernandez, but Teo, I'm warning you, you need to be better defensively at international competition. Alongside him on the bench defensively, we're going to have two centre-backs as well. Harry Maguire, as I said, I thought was great for England in every single game we played in. And Roman Saiz, who was just an absolute warrior. Onto midfield, and we find one of his teammates in Unahi, who's probably unlucky, to be honest, not to get into the team overall. But I thought McAllister and Enzo Fernandez were so, so good that I couldn't really leave them out. Bruno Fernandes has to make it in as the man with literally the best average rating across the entire tournament. Every single game he played in, he performed five goal contributions in, I think, five games. I think he really established himself as one of the main men, if not the main man in that Portugal team now that Cristiano Ronaldo was getting dropped every now and again. Jude Bellingham also gets a place on the bench. Maturity beyond his years. What a player. But in every single game, he looked unbelievable. We'll also find Luka Modric here on the bench. I cannot stress enough enough how good some of the central midfielders have been in this tournament and him especially third place fully deserved and in the terms of the forwards we'll round things off with Bukayo Saka of England who again I think was definitely our best forward option and Cody Gakpo who I think was unfortunate really not to go further definitely the best performer for the Netherlands in a side in a Netherlands side to be honest which I don't think is very good once you get past Van Dijk, De Ligt and De Jong there's not a whole amount of quality that he was working with so that is my team of the tournament as you can see is on the screen including the substitutes as well. Who do you think I unfairly left out? Who do you think could be changed out of this team? Let me know down in the comment section below. If you've got any more honorable mentions for players that I didn't mention at all, then leave that down there too. But if you enjoyed this video, feel free to slap a like on it. And of course, subscribe if you are new to the channel. You can also follow me on social media. It is at DivisionFNG on Twitter and on Insta. It's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy yourselves and goodbye.